Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the end of the league instead of the start. So I've just got a trophy in my second attempt with uh, my friend Tassone's Mono Black Agro deck, uh, Mono Black Hate Beers, Scam, Initiative, whatever you want to call it. So I wasn't recording this league, but since I got a trophy, I think it's worth uh, going through it. Um, let's start a little bit about the deck. Um, this is the second league I play. I got a 3-1, three, 3-2 three, in the first one. Now, let me update. We are 8-2. So, this is Lorenzo's take on um, this pretty common nowadays mono black uh, scam agro shell. Uh, we have the reanimates, grief, troll package, obviously, orcish bowmasters, boy walker, oppo agent. That's the usual stuff. Couple of shieldreds. That ritual obviously to accelerate. We have fatal push shieldred as common removal as well. But now we are going to talk about uh, the particularities of this specific deck list. So, Tassoni and friends uh, are testing a couple of cooling the week. So, theoretically, this is for uh, very, very aggro, greedy openers where you grief with the bulk trigger in the stack, you're cooling the week, uh, the grief, you get the four mana, the discard um, trigger, and then you have four mana to deploy shieldred, another grief, a seer maybe a couple of two drops, whatever. <clears throat> That's the theory. Then, um, instead of having a snoof out or dismember, they are running a couple of murder riders, which are pretty interesting. So obviously, um, the deck uh, is losing speed on the early game. Because uh, dismember snuff out are far easier to cast than murder rider, require less mana, but this is much better on the mid late game. Uh, and obviously, you get a body as a reward. Um, so yeah. Then there's one lower skitter. Pretty interesting card. It's a three three four three. So okay, pretty reasonable. And uh, in the fashion of Ravel Master. Uh, at the beginning of our combat phase, uh, it poops a 1-1 one, one rat that cannot block and it doesn't have haste either. So, But whenever a rat enters under we control, enters a battlefield, we get to excite one card from a piece uh, graveyard. So, well, interesting to say the least. Uh, at least a 3-3 is uh, pretty reasonable stats. Uh, the initiative creature of choice is the passageway seer. The lifeling is relevant. Uh, this creature keeps growing and growing. So, yeah. <clears throat> Something we commented and I've already said on the previous video. Uh, at least I hope to be released before this one. Uh, is that if they decided to go for Ravenloft adventure instead, they could have um cover of souls as an additional option to the mana base because raven love oppo agent and Bo boy walker both of, all of them are rogues so that would be something to consider but this makes the mana base more stable i uh, imagine this mana base with four uh cavern here so obviously just five swamps, which could be a little bit uh, sketchy with four trolls. And we could have a lot of openers where we couldn't cast rituals, reanimates, shieldreds, whatever. So yeah, we've gone with this one. We have three wastelands instead of the full playset, ancient tombs to help accelerate into all these four and three drops and moving to the cyborg we have three thoughts for whenever we need more disruption 
plus Torak that complements it and very good against the white control decks. Couple of neutrals for the artifact decks. Fourth opposition is here for the correct matches like uh, Cloud Post, uh, all the variants of Lands, Celestia Depths, uh, great, um, Cradle Control, so on. Even against uh, other kind of tutoring effects that Opis might be uh, using. You never know, like for example against uh, Visage Storm decks uh, or Storm decks in general, Opposition is pretty decent as well. You can get Infernal Tutor by surprise, Besiege, so yeah, pretty this. Three Black Engineers for going white strategies or when we are facing other Bowmaster decks, uh, we can name Orc. We have a Sorin for the control matches and Leyline for the Graveyard decks. And you'll see we are going to uh, use Ley Lines quite a bit and not in the matches that um, it really shines, but uh, yeah. So that's the decks, folks. Uh, you already know the result. Um, today we are kind of doing uh, the reverse uh, leak. Pretty happy about it. You'll notice that I punted more than twice or three times uh, during the league. I realized some of them, probably missed other ones. Bear with me. Uh, I still got the trophy, so uh, I'm happy, but yeah, uh, point out whatever you, whatever you see. Uh, it helps me improve. I know I always say the same, I, I never improve, but uh, someday, someday uh, I'll get better. So I think this is enough. Let's uh, go to the game history and start reviewing the leak. But before that, just let me show you. Oops, sorry. That I'm not kidding you. Okay, my last uh, OP got a little bit, uh, but there it is, our FIFO with uh, the deck, you see that that's the deck. I'm not trying to cheese you. So let's go. Okay. Here it is. Game one of round one. We go down to six. We were on the draw. So here I wanted to get them with opposition. And here I try to. I knew I couldn't get both fetches, but so be it. Maybe I should have gone main phase, but we got to steal uh, one of those at least. Then we started the aggression. We went for their mana. Just attacking with Boy Walker, obviously. And deploy a second one. So our clock was very good. An OP basically was uh, chased by Opoision. And uh, yeah, that was it. Moving to game two. That was a pretty reasonable hand. So OP was playing kind of um, Sultai Tempo deck, Sultai Beans Tempo is deck. Probably uh, at least similar to Pokemokis. Here I try to uh, get the troll going. And, and it's very common nowadays. We had the um, Bowmasters uh, Wars here. Honestly, I don't know if this was a good play or not. We could have uh, waited and deployed Black Engineer. Name more can so be it. Uh, 
and Murdite wasn't too big but uh, obviously they got the upper hand in the race by far we needed to respond here but they're still in trouble and here they really got me good with uh, their second ball masters that was very very harsh and the, the game was already very tough but uh, that days um, closed the deal for them uh, yeah one one then for game three So they took advantage to, uh, to use their fetch and their brainstorm before uh, we could do any kind of trick. Here I took two damage unnecessarily by tapping Ancient Tomb uh, before seeing if that ritual was resolving or not. That was a minor mistake on my part they got another Murtate again but this time the removal work they managed to stop me from reanimating but that top deck was amazing absolutely amazing We had Fatal Push still and one Murder Rider that was meant to come pretty soon. Getting a back some life. Play the Murderous. which they destroyed we knew they could do it because we had already seen the Abrupt Decay here came a uh, Mandrills but the ape was in clear disadvantage here we had already lethal on board so they were forced to champ black Here they needed to do something. They had another champ blocker on uh, endurance, which I didn't really care. Here it's worth noting seeing that I could have bowmasters ping itself, activate the revolt, kill the endurance, and get the passageways uh, searing. But we were so far ahead. OP only with one card in hand that I decided it's not wasn't worth it. Just wait one more turn and that's it. And the second seer was a huge beating. Decided to take bow master just in case they drew country. And with this board it was mostly impossible to lose the match uh, yeah and we were 1-0 okay this is round 2 against Vendilion misclick played several times against them against them pretty nice game I name name game not name so we were facing Delver I kept a greedy hand that depended a lot on troll so if they were on some kind of a stifle build we were in huge trouble but instead they went very aggro here I was hoping uh, between Fatal Push and 
shield the Teddy we could manage. Then the Urborg was nice. And it seemed we could uh, And it, here it was interesting that they let both removal go through and be very patient about that force of will. I was pretty impressed here. So if I had been on their shoes, I would have probably used force of will to protect one of the two drown rage, I think. So well done, Opie. That movement was weird. That wasteland, killing wasteland, it was something I didn't really understood since they have two lands and they didn't need so many to operate. They could have cut me from two black. They didn't know I had Boy Walker, obviously, but I still not sure about that wasteland, killing wasteland. Yeah, Murtai was scary. But I got a Dragon Rage. We should have probably block, but... Getting a stack on mana was very rough though, and... They were hitting by 7, I was hitting for 6, so we were down to 5, and with the second Bowmasters we were already very dead, and I conceded. I think the game uh, was lost when I decided to reanimate the Dragon Rage, probably should have been more greedy and go for a troll. Yeah. But I don't know if I, we would have won the race. That Murtide was pressuring me a lot. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, game two. We got a pretty decent hand. Very sketchy having Urborg as our only black source. So I decided to protect it. And very glad I did. Because that wasteland would have been horrendous. Here I decided that we were trying to deploy a passageway here as soon as possible. And that's what we intended to do. And we got them. Then with the floating mana, I was going to cycle the troll. Now we had already ensured mana for the following turns. Unfortunately, OP had an answer for the passageways here, which you'll see in just a sec. There you go, with the dismember. So OP was going to steal um, the initiative. They were in a four color bill of Delver or Tempo. Black Engineer was huge though, very very good top deck. Combination of Ley Line plus Black Engineer is a good way to get rid of channelers for good. So now my worry was that they had another creature but they didn't. So. I felt pretty comfortable with Shieldred's Edict just in case they deployed Bowmaster or something. They got a Questing Druid. Uh, we got back the initiative. Dope the Boy Walker. We knew about this Brazen Borrower, but I had to put the counter somewhere. And they managed to kill. 
engineer as well. The pressure was on though. So the hope here was that they didn't find uh, Orkish Bowmasters to uh, punish my archive trigger next turn, which could have happened uh, pretty easily. Yeah, I tried to kill the questing druid. I didn't want to go back and forth with initiative if we could avoid it, but they had a force of negation. We got the trigger. We tried to reanimate the seer, which we couldn't. But the plug engineer was very nice. We named Rogue because we knew about this brazen borrower that was coming in. An OP was at 3. And they conceded. They didn't have any answer for this boy walker, which was going to kill them next turn. So, yeah. Then moving to game 3, we had a ley line opener. Bit of a weird hand with too many rituals, so I decided to try to slow down OP as much as possible. They had an Ulrod which surprised me a little bit. Maybe they thought we were on a Helm deck, probably. Because I didn't show them any Mox Chrome or Petal. Here with those many rituals I decided to hard cast grief. The new mana that appear on the patch it's very annoying, honestly. So that's what we knew about the hand. So the idea was to avoid using the Ulborg as much as possible, to uh, not let them abuse of our the black mana. Though Skaldirtan could go fetch whatever they need. Didn't attack with grief because uh, I didn't want to expose it to Bowmasters. But that Brazen Borrower was rough. Here I decided to go for it since I had the Fatal Push and very little less to do. With a little more to yeah, little else more to do. So here I'm gonna try to kill Bowmaster. But they had a force, so we are trading. And I should have probably cycled the troll here, but in my mind, since they weren't using the wasteland, I thought that maybe we would be using ritual to hard cast it, but no way. Wasteland of our own was this. And here we were on the low resources uh, game, which they should have been favored. But we managed to go around the 8th all the time. Here I named Rock again because of this Blazon Borrower. Probably would have been better to name Orc anyway, but. There you have the mana for Brazen, and we were at 9, so... Take it first, just to see how the coast looked like, and then move into Passageway, which resolved pretty easily. So 
So if we manage to, uh, that was an interesting choice by OP, dismembering the plug engineer instead of the passageway. I don't know if in their mind they thought they were going to outrace me with Brazen and, Brace and B, but man, passageways here has lifelink. So yeah, I would have dismembered the seer for sure. And Shieldred, it's absolutely everything here. Yeah, from the very second that passageways here I started gaining life, I think the game was over. They got the Brazen B, but how the hell are you going to beat those two together? The shield trigger put them down to 9. They conceded here because uh, we had Lithar in the backswing. They can put us to 9. Maybe they were holding Bolt or something, but two Bolts were already on Exile. So even if they had the other two, that wasn't enough to kill us. Still think they should have dismembered the passageway, but we take it. Okay, here we are for round 3. First hand had too many lands. Second Juan, second Juan, second Han. Juan is the name of one of my friends. Uh, this was a very sketchy hand. Didn't expect to be playing against Tempo right away again, which made me worry a lot. They had a very, very aggressive start. And zero removal is a beating here. Because no matter what we deploy, they can bounce it and I'm going to harm myself quite a bit so I decided to double a spell which it work and cycle the troll and here I don't know if, if OP forgot about bone masters and this was a shame scoop or what but yeah uh, from a very favored position, in my opinion, mm, to a complete mess in a couple of seconds. But yeah, good for us. Then game two. We got a pretty medium hand. Really made, made it much, much better. Second animate was a bit meh, but now we are going to cycle. Play the first animate. Tick the beast. Didn't find them an answer, but they had a force. I tried to reanimate again. They have a second date because the first one was pitched to force. They seek the beast again. So we knew they had a lightning ball to kill this boy walker, but maybe I should have waited one turn, let this lightning ball go face. This draw was amazing. And the combination with a shield red was fantastic. We could get rid of border creatures and here they suicide their dragon rage. I think they forgot that DRC is a human. So I don't know if OP is a little bit new to MTG or whatever. Couple of weird mistakes. We were flooding out a little bit, but OP was in a very low resources. I didn't feel like wasteland volcanic makes sense here. Was waiting for a tropical or a underground. Children look very powerful here. And they considered to it. So yeah, 
3 0. Okay, round 4. Decided to keep this hand again. Hoping to uh, tease opponent with Oppo. We tried. And we succeeded. Going to go slow. Oh, doesn't matter. We're trying to uh, stop it for you to uh, see the de OP's deck, but to it. Here I know that I was delaying myself from my game plan by deploying Tropical, but I was trying to make them use the Wasteland here. Didn't work though, but. OP was in huge trouble. If I recall properly, they had um, a couple of uh, Lorien reveals that we saw with Oppo Asian. I don't get why MTGO doesn't keep cards revealed with Oppo Asian here. I guess because it, the text is not revealed, it's like you look through hand deck and whatever. Yeah, I guess that's the reason. Yeah, there you got the reveals, which they couldn't use because of Opoision. Here we have Lethal and OP considered. So we were facing, just for you to know, uh, blue, green, uh, being star tempo deck. So all their creatures are, or the only creatures they have are um, Murtite and Mandrills. So I'm going to bring, uh, or about to bring Ley Lines for, uh, for sure. But you'll see what happens on the next game. This was a Mulligan. This was this, having the Ley Line. That's a hand. It was a weird situation because they have multiple answers for what they wanted to do. So I started to dismantle their hand a little bit. The wasteland was rough. And I was trying to play around eighth. This is quite of a bit weird game. And all the early advantage uh, we managed to uh, uh, have uh, goes to nothing in all these dead turns. Here, try to uh, resolve a passageway here. Thanks to that ritual, playing around eighth. But they had a force. Pitching the eighth. Now I knew they had to dismember, but we had to try. We need to make them use it and try to uh, keep the next threat alive. Decided to go main phase with Bow Masters just to try to neutralize any kind of uh, uh, country they might have. But my Urborg made them a favor here. Uh, they could have used it anyway. And 
now very soon uh, those beanstalkers are going to take over the game so they start getting plenty of cards they force me to uh, thought is myself decide to go with grief maybe I should have uh, taken the murder rider there's the third bean and you'll see that up to a point I'm going to try to reanimate the passageways here they commandeer it taking control of the reanimate and we are going to lose the game because of this so they take the passageways here I try to kill it they force it draw three more cards at this point the game was absolutely out of control so I messed up terribly I should have never ever used that reanimate they don't have the mana to deploy mandrills or murtai that are the only threats on their deck so it was thanks to me that they got a creature this is the worst decision on the whole league for sure the biggest punt so here we got back and forth a little bit but they are so so far ahead on cars that it's not going to matter I tried to kill it on upkeep but they had another force they were drawing even more cards and yeah that reanimate cost me the game just to um, not to be so harsh on myself I should say that I think their deck list ran only one commandeer because we've uh, seen their deck with uh, opposition on game one and I recall just one commandeer in the 60 original cards I don't know if they brought some more from the cyborg but man so so tough here I was just resisting I don't know why because they had a full grip nothing we could do and now they got to a point that they could start hard casting their threats and yeah now game three which i already forgot don't remember it ah that's the i i, I remember let's put a stop this is a very interesting uh, game for us so when we thought since them I realized they couldn't stop me uh, since we were on the play that day doesn't work yet they have um, Brazen B but that's a problem for two turns in the future so the cost was clear to uh, play second ritual and deploy the passageways here which we need uh, for the mana and I decided to take the true name because if we manage to reanimate it that's something they can ever ever get rid of so I decided to go to attack first and here we managed to reanimate the true name and at this point I think the game was already over Now P has Brazen B available, but they were already at, at 10. Here they are going to bounce, but going down to 7, and they know they are dead in 3 swings. We got an Edict effect, which is nice now fetching here 
put them dead on my following tour they daze it they pay they are gonna daze it again which it doesn't really matter that much because they were already dead and I think they realize it finally so even if they play line more tight they cannot stall the true name at 3 life so yeah it's nice to kill OP with their own little fishes finally last round we were on the play I decided not to use the grief which I regretted quite a bit later on because uh, we gave them the priority or the initiative in the grief wars but luckily they didn't have a reanimate to uh, follow it up so decided to take it easy since we had this uh, ancient tomb here try to hard cast the grief instead of pitch them Here I thought it was worth going for the underground, but they had a troll, so this was a neutral turn, kinda. We were exactly in the same position as before. So I was trying to play around eighth. That's why I played Boy Walker here when I drew the swamp. Unfortunately, they are going to kill it. And now we are going to start um, to deploy uh, griefs as it is. Chop on their hand here. So they have Brazen B, Grief Death, uh, Sauron Ransom, which is the one I took. Final run, and now I'm gonna make another mistake. Let me tell you. So, on the second mains, I'm going to use that ritual and play the second grief. Yep, yep, yep. Wait, um, sorry for that. And I took their grief, which later I decided I realized it was a mistake. I should have taken their brazen bee, because they use it to bounce the grief, and they didn't have the mana to deploy their own grief, so that was a mistake. Definitely a pawn. Definitely. Now here I'm going. I'm gonna give them the option to uh, brazen B plus death. Just need them to use that death. Yeah, we know about that. But I should have definitely have taken that brazen B. Let the grief be. Gonna play Grief again. And here I started to realize that we were in huge trouble. Second Brazen B, very rough. They got a Wazer of their own. Because at this point we are already losing. And let me tell you another thing using this Wasteland. That turn was a huge mistake. I should have uh, waited, uh, see if they use their own wasteland to waste my wasteland, which probably should have done. Wait through my turn, use wasteland to get revolt, 
and kill one of the brazen bee and that's gonna cost me the game eventually so yeah very bad play on my part here because now we don't have any way um, to get rid of the borrowers I got a grief, but it doesn't really matter. They are going to swing for six. Put me to six, I can put them to four. They kill me. I'm gonna wait one draw, just to see if we happen to draw something to have revolt, but we didn't. So two very huge mistakes uh, on this game that cost uh, my loss first not uh, getting rid of the brazen bee I should have taken priority here over the grief they didn't have the fourth mana for the grief so absolutely this should have been the target I didn't expect the second one but that's out of my control and the second big mistake was using the wasteland in a torn cycle where I couldn't use the revolt so very bad look here we are in turn 2 I decided to wait one turn to use the grief just see what OP is intending to do And we happen to draw a bow master, which is nice in case they answer with a brainstorm, which they didn't. And they had it. Decided to take the brainstorm uh, because that cancels their options of force of will anyway. And I did prefer to go with passageways here instead of bow masters. So. So they got an edict, we knew about that. I put both of that back. And I decided to main deck Bowmaster just in case they drew a cantrip. And that treasure is gonna be relevant eventually you'll see they forced the uh, boy walker and here they got their fourth mana to deploy their own grief which they are going to and this time we are going to have the revolt to kill it thanks to the treasure token which was a cute, uh, nice interaction. And I think they were a little bit rushed on conceding here, but I guess getting the skeleton, they don't have any way to get the initiative back and the following turn it's the throne. So, yeah. And here we are for the last game. We're going to start with Leyline again. OP again with a Wasteland opener. I always expect a troll when I see those openers, but they didn't. That's a very weird keep by OP. Wasteland plus Mystic Sanctuary. Decided to go for Boy Walker because if they daze it, they are time walking themselves again assuming this was their only island they happen to have an underground so which I'm gonna try to wasteland here and here comes the mind game so they Sauron in response now 
I'm gonna show them Flag Engineer plus Reanimate. I tend to put the creature and the reanimate always on the same side, maybe with the exception of troll, because they can go to the bin easily. But uh, if you show them reanimate on one side, creature on the other, and it, and they take the reanimate, you are giving them the creature in the indirectly. So I don't like to do so. So I'm gonna show them reanimate, plug engineer which they took and that's gonna be irrelevant because there was there they lost their two mana sources swamp and lorian reveal which what i really intended to do because they didn't have black that could have been an underground there's a swamp here i tried to deploy lost kitter just a 3-3 because they didn't have graveyard but they were so far behind that uh, they felt they had to con um, counter it. They still are without black mana. I'm not going to deploy the Urborg, that's for sure. Here I'm playing around Dave, just in case. Name Orc. They happen to draw black source. Already down to eight still with no black mana and here I'm gonna play Shieldred even if they daze it don't care putting them down to one and surprisingly they decided to play a ponder which is gonna kill them But yeah, this was a, a game that it was defined by two factors. First, very weird keep on their side. They kept the hand with Wasteland, Mystic Sanctuary, no troll. So because I keep these hands sometimes, but with a troll, man. Uh, yeah, it was a very weird uh, keep. Second factor was how we distributed that Sauron Ransom and the decision they made to keep it. Still not sure why they decided to keep the Reanimate uh, plus uh, um, Engineer, but it worked out. Uh, they had Swamp and Lorien. This game would have been completely different had they took the, uh, the or had they taken the other uh, pile, they would have had plenty of mana, black sources, so probably they maybe would have been favored even, so yeah, and then they got a little bit, uh, as you've seen before, uh, tilted, it's true that they were unlucky, because they could have found a country early on, they could have found another black source, a troll, whatever, but man, uh, you put yourself in this position with your keep and your decision as well of how you get with the Sauron. So yeah, and that was our trophy. So here we are again. Sorry for the uh, review of the leak. Just thought it was uh, worth doing so. So. Did we play against Tempo decks the whole league? It was two scams. It was a scam first round, I think so. Two scams, two derbers, two and uh Beanstalk uh Simic uh Tempo deck. So man this mono black it's a dismantler for Tempo decks, it seems. <laughs> At least based on this league. Very happy about it. Um, on the 3-2 we lost against two decks that out aggro us but I'm still to face um, or yet to face hard control decks and combo decks and see how we perform against them but yeah it's feeling pretty good 
very happy about this trophy. Uh, things that I don't like. I'm boarding out almost every single game this two cool in the week. Sorry Tasso, but I've never ever got to do the thing with cool in the week. It's a very bad top deck later on. Uh, it's true that you, you can use it to ramp it in the mid game uh, using one rat token or one army token, but still rituals are enough, tombs are enough normally. Uh, yeah. I think I would cut this cooling the wicks. I might keep them for a while, uh, get more games with the deck to evaluate properly, but so far mm, they are up to their name, so they are the weakest part of the deck. Um, everything else looks pretty fine. Um, we are yet to see Lord Skitter going off uh, properly, but yeah, generally speaking, the shell is powerful. Cyborg, very happy about the ley lines, as I uh, rumored on the introduction. Don't know if we need the fourth opposition, but uh, we haven't been facing the proper games for her, so. Not gonna touch it yet. Engineers have played a important role uh, in plenty of game two, game two and three. So yeah, pretty happy about them. So yeah, I'll keep featuring and tinkering with the deck. Give more games. Try to give uh, the best feedback I can to Tassone and their friends. Uh, there are one of them is preparing for uh, Eternal Weekend uh, on Prague uh, with this deck. So I hope uh, my games, despite my huge mistakes, uh, are gonna help them a little bit to uh, decide how to tune in the deck for that big tournament. Uh, yeah, that's it for now, folks. Uh, I'll be back with more mono black or other stuff uh, soon enough uh, and yeah as always thanks for watching and see you around